Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday, Christmas week. Hope everyone's doing all right. We've got another beautiful day here. Uh, more nice days in December than we, uh, than we deserve, maybe. Um, so thanks for being here. I got a few things to talk with you about today. We're, of course, we're going to talk about COVID, talk a little bit about the vaccine, talk about Christmas. Um, and uh, we released a police report today. We'll talk for just a second about that. And um, then, of course, we're going to take your questions. So first, COVID. Um, <clears throat> COVID numbers are a little tiny bit better in terms of number of positive tests. Uh, City of St. Louis right now is running, sorry, I seem to not have my papers right today. Here we go. City of St. Louis right now is running about um, 37 people per 100,000 on average per day. Uh, are getting positive tests. It's really 110,000 people on average per day for the last seven days. Our numbers are um, going down a little. They're still way too high, so so we can't we can't feel good about this except that at least it's going down a bit in the right direction. Uh, St. Louis County numbers are about 62 per 100,000. St. Charles looks like is 56 per 100,000. Jefferson 72. Uh, on average, the state of Missouri is 54. So city of St. Louis is sitting at 37. Um, and so that it's better than the surrounding counties. It is still not good by any stretch of the imagination. So that brings me to, well, let me talk a minute about the hospital numbers. So these numbers lag two days behind, you know this. So these numbers are from most likely Friday and uh, on Friday, there were a total of 944 people in the hospitals in our region here that were either COVID positive, that was 847, or suspected of being COVID positive, that was 97. Of the 944 people, 191 were in the ICU. Um, so they're very serious, that's about 20% 20, 20 the people in the hospital were in the ICU. And of that number, 123 were on ventilators. And you know that is uh, extremely serious once you're on a ventilator. Um, number of deaths in the city of St. Louis so far is 282 since this pandemic started. So a little less than one per thousand. If you look back to in the month of December so far, so for the 20 days of December, 42 people have died in the city of St. Louis in the last 20 days. So that's about two per day in the city of St. Louis. Um, number of patients admitted to the hospital, last number, which is a Friday number, is 91. That's down a, a bit. And uh, number of people discharged was 106. So um, hospitals are still very, their capacity is still very stressed. Their, their staff is still very stressed. Imagine working this hard every day now for 10 months. That, that takes a toll. And over the last uh, two months, the hospitals have really been stressed in terms of their capacity and their workforce, because it's really all about workforce. It's not about having an empty bed. It's about having somebody there to care for you if you're in that bed. So that, that is the, uh, that's the, continues to be the concern. Um, of course, this week's Christmas, Christmas Eve's Thursday, Christmas Day's Friday, and then next week we've got New Year's Eve Thursday, New Year's on Friday. Um, I just really want to reiterate that Christmas cannot look like you want it to. It cannot look like it previously has. Um, you've got to really keep your group very small. Ideally, you keep your group just to your household, um, but in no case more than 10 people. Um, your group needs to stay small. You need to wear a mask, even uh, within your own house if you have guests or someone someone else over, neighbors, whatever. Um, 
And so you, you have to continue to follow these protocols. We, we just are fearful that we will see another rise in number of cases, which will mean a rise in hospitalization, which will mean a rise in deaths uh, after the Christmas and New Year's holidays. And so um, I think many, many people, most people, the vast majority of people are doing a good job right now. Um, but it is hard over the holidays to really uh, not get together with your friends. If you are gonna get together with your friends, please be outside. Now, if a day like today, fine, you could be outside, put your coat on, you know, go out on the back porch, the front porch, take a walk. But I'm carefully watching Christmas Eve day and it's predicted to be a high of 28 and a low in the teens, 15 or 17. That's too cold probably to be outside for much time. So you may have to cancel whatever you are planning to do on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day if you can't get it moved outside. So, sorry to be uh, the bearer of that bad news. I know you know it already, but it's just important to remember it and uh, to, to follow that, follow that protocol. Um, traveling, really don't recommend traveling if you can help it at all. If you are gonna travel, please be sure to follow and traveling can mean driving, uh, you know, stopping along the way or, or flying. We know there are a lot of people that are flying, um, but just, you know, be careful when you're in the airport. Be sure you're continuing to wear your mask. Um, you know, a lot of folks have recommended that if you're in a situation and you're around a lot of people, wear your mask, but also wear a face shield or uh, even, even glasses, you know, the the kind of glasses that you might use on a workbench or something that can wrap around. So consider trying to shield yourself from as much of the air particles as possible so, so that you don't get sick. And um, what else do we have here? Oh, today, just a little bit ago, we released the Teneo report. You all may remember, it was several months ago that I told you that uh, Civic Progress Companies and the Regional Business Council engaged uh, a nationally, internationally recognized firm uh, called Teneo, T-E-N-E-O. And uh, Commissioner Chuck Ramsey, Charles Ramsey, headed up the effort to review the St. Louis City Police Department. That final report came out this morning. We got the final report. I got it at about 8 o'clock this morning. We've been reading it all day. I'm not 100% through it, but very close. It's about 40 pages, but it's dense. Uh, we have posted that <clears throat> on our website. Uh, so if you're interested in reading that um, and taking a look at what this really objective assessment by um, a firm which has is the most highly regarded law enforcement firm in the country, um, I, th I think you'll find some, some interesting things there. And uh, you know, in short, we'll also post, uh, we had an interview with uh, Commissioner Ramsey. We'll, we'll post that um, as, soon as, we, as soon as we get the copy and get it, uh, get it posted. So those of you that are interested, you can, you can take a look at that. I think that's all on my list. Do we have any questions today? A couple of questions. Uh, did you talk about the vaccines? Mm, I didn't. Sorry. Hang on. I was going to talk about vaccines. Um, you know that the Pfizer vaccine was approved about 10 days ago under an emergency approval by the FDA. And then last Friday, so three or four days ago, the Moderna vaccine was approved. And if you've turned on the TV over the weekend, you see that it's, be, it's going out to over 3,000 locations around the country. I think one of the things, the um, fun things, is something that we can be proud of here in St. Louis is that St. Louis University, Dr. Sharon Fry and Dr. Dan Hoft, uh, they were, uh, they, they ran the, the third trial for the Moderna, Moderna vaccine. Um, and so we're proud that St. Louis played a little part in that, maybe more than a little part. 
in the uh, approval of the Moderna vaccine uh, right here in St. Louis. And, and that probably means that there were a lot of St. Louisans that, are in, that, are in that uh, were in that trial. So thank you to everybody per, who participated in that. The vaccine, two vaccines now, but there are likely to be a number of additional vaccines over the next few weeks and months um, as <clears throat> the scientists try to figure out how to vaccinate the world. And uh, the vaccines are, uh, I mean, the vac having the vaccine is one thing, but the most important thing is getting the vaccination. It's a two-step process. You get the first vaccination. Three to four weeks later, you get the second vaccination. Um, and so that is the key, is to really uh, persuade people. You see a lot of prominent people uh, now getting, getting the vaccine on TV. You know, the vice president got it on TV and a number of people like that. And, you know, they're doing that to uh, demonstrate that they believe the vaccine is safe and to persuade all of us, all of you, to get the vaccine when the time, when your turn comes. Right now, the vaccine is available to frontline health workers, doctors, nurses, people who work in hospitals, um, <clears throat> who interface face-to-face -face with patients on a daily basis because they are at the highest risk. Um, next after that will be first responders, police, fire, EMS, um, nursing homes, people who both work in nursing homes and reside in nursing homes um, and congregate care facilities. <clears throat> and then after that will be people over 65 who just don't fall into one of the first few categories. And then finally, just the general public who's not at as high a risk of, of either contracting the virus or of having a bad outcome from the virus as the folks that are healthcare workers, first responders, over 65, underlying health conditions. Uh, so we don't know exactly when that will be, but you know, maybe March when it's available to the general public. We're gonna learn more over the next few months. You think back to what we knew about this um, pandemic just even three months ago compared to what we have and what we know today, and it's changed dramatically. And I expect we're gonna continue to learn more and continue the, the whole vaccination process is going to evolve. So um, a very important tool, however, you, just because we have vaccines, you got to continue to wear your masks. You've got to continue to socially distance in order to keep yourself safe and the people that you love safe. Uh, some people have said, "Well, if I've if I've had COVID, do I still need to get the vaccine?" Yes, you. They say you still need to to take the vaccination, even after you have the vaccination. They're encouraging you still to wear a mask and socially distance. Um, the state had some frequently asked questions posted that were pretty good. We'll post those for you, for those of you, uh, a link to those, for those of you who want to read, read that, um, just to be thinking about the, the vaccine and your own personal vaccinations, so. Okay, questions, starting with COVID <clears throat> and vaccine-related topics. So, on the vaccine, Cass' question there is, which vaccine do you think you'll get and when? Uh, Kat, I will, I don't know which vaccine I'll get and I don't know when I will get it. Uh, I'm not a healthcare worker. I'm not a first responder. Um, I hate to tell you, I am in that over 65 category, but I'm pretty healthy. So no underlying health conditions. So for me, I, I am expecting that it's still a couple of two, three months away. And I don't know what vaccine will be available to me at the time. It's not something that you generally have a choice about. Um, but when it's my turn, I will absolutely take the vaccine. Uh, Ken's question is about the general public. You said a couple of months away. How do you <clears throat> foresee the general public finding out it's their turn and where they can go and those sorts of, uh, that sort of information? So that information is going to be, be available everywhere, literally in all the media outlets, in, on social media, mainstream media. Um, we have a communication plan that we're getting ready to roll out, which we'll roll out through the federally qualified health centers. Uh, we'll even do paper flyers uh, to be handed out through neighborhood groups um, so, that, so that everybody knows it's their turn. On vaccine distribution, Cheryl uh, is watching and asked questions, and we had a couple of 
questions along these sentiments. Like testing for COVID, do you think the city will have drive-through vaccination locations? And how are we making sure that it gets to sort of <coughs> underserved areas and portions of the community that are hard to reach? Um, I think it's likely that we, we would have drive-through locations. Now, the only difference here is that right now they are saying that when you get the vaccination, they want you to kind of stay seated for 15 minutes or so so that they can make sure you don't have any adverse uh, effect to it. So whether or not that will go away and you can literally drive off in your car, I don't know. Um, and I think we just answered the question about when will you know it's your turn. It'll be all over the media, social media, et cetera. We will have, you'll be able to get the vaccine through a federally qualified health center. We anticipate you'll be able to get it at CVS, at Walgreens, uh, through your own doctor. There'll be many, probably through urgent care, there'll be many, many places where you can get the vaccine. Uh, Wendy had a question about uh, COVID and the flu. I don't know if we have the stats mm -hmm. in front of us today, mm -hmm. but generally, how has the flu season been in the city of St. Louis? Mm -hmm. because lots of people are taking extra precautions and wearing masks. So this is an interesting question. I don't know how many positive flu cases we've had in the city of St. Louis today, but what I have read is some national averages. Um, and there are very, very few cases of the flu that have been identified at this point in time. And some people attribute that to the fact that, you know, the flu is also spread uh, aerosol person to person. So when you're wearing your mask and you're social distancing and you're no longer hugging and kissing all your friends when you see them or even shaking hands, that it, and, and you're washing your hands more often, that has also cut down on the transmission of the flu. So. Um, the flu cases are, are very few at this point in time. Um, still on COVID-19, Cheryl has a question about churches coming up. A lot of places have Christmas Eve services. Uh, are midnight masses being allowed to happen in the city? Um, with the social distancing, they are being allowed. We actually, church has been going on some, many churches have been going on all along, but many of them also have the virtual virtual church. Um, thank you. That's a good note. Many of church, many of the churches are also taking reservations. So check with your own church, and they do that because they can't pack the place. You know, normally uh, a lot of a lot of churches are packed on on Christmas Eve, and maybe even Christmas afternoon and everybody goes and you get there early, so you make sure you get a seat. Well, it's you can't pack the place, so um, check with your own church um, to see if they're taking reservations. Uh, it will have to be much different, you know, not much singing, if any singing, so a very different situation. Uh, Nathan's question related to COVID-19 has to do with businesses. Mm -hmm. What is being done or what can the city do about businesses that are saying they are closing for good mm -hmm. due to COVID-19? Well, we know that so many businesses, particularly businesses, uh, restaurants, <clears throat> even retail, but restaurants and people in the uh, entertainment uh, and convention business have just not had hardly any business. Now, in the city of St. Louis, our restaurants have continued to be open for indoor dining with uh, the, the restriction that they have to have tables at least six feet apart. And they can't have more than 50% occupancy. We've also encouraged uh, dividers, whether it be um, uh, plexiglass dividers or other kinds of dividers, and then uh, the cleaning process. So. Our businesses have fared better, but it's still really tough to make it, even at 50% capacity. And so what we have done in the city is we have offered two different times now $5,000 grants to businesses, small businesses in particular. Um, and I know $5,000 isn't enough uh, perhaps to make a difference, uh, make a big enough difference, but it has helped some businesses get over the hump. and till they can get a little bit back on their feet. Uh, and also, of course, just uh, today, Congress has passed the new CARES Act II, I'm calling it, uh, which will have some additional PPP for businesses 
um, similar to the first round, which was back in early summer. Uh, so there are, there are some helps in that way. Um, what we have tried to do is put the um, restrictions in place and balance those restrictions with the need to have people remain at work uh, because it's not only about the business, it's also very much about the employees of that business. And when they can't go to work, then their, you know, their ability to provide for their family is severely, severely impacted. So. One of our last COVID questions, I think, comes from Jackie Mayer, uh, wanting to know when officially does the eviction moratorium end? Uh, it ends on the 31st, so next, a week and a half from now. Uh, we did get some questions from viewers on the police report, Mayor, that okay. uh, we released today. Uh, general questions about what are your thoughts about it, uh, what you've read so far, were you surprised by anything or any of the mm -hmm. findings that mm -hmm. they came to? Well, my general thought is this. One, we, uh, we welcomed this review by this very highly regarded um, law enforcement agency. Um, it's 42 pages. I think that in general, the report um, says that we have a good police department, that we have a lot of good officers, that the department is understaffed. We knew that. Um, that we could communicate better. I, I think that's true in virtually every business, and so we will endeavor to do that, to make sure that the strategies uh, are communicated down through the ranks. Um, and so I thought it was a pretty good report. Now, there are many recommendations, maybe, maybe hundreds. There, it's uh, key findings and recommendations. And so when you look at it, you'll, you'll see some of those things as well. But, but we always want to get better. And um, so I think this has been uh, an opportunity that we would have not had this opportunity had it not been for Civic Progress Companies and the Regional Business Council. Because frankly, a city would just never be able to afford that kind of high level consulting. So uh, I thank them for that. And uh, the chief is, uh, uh, will have a review and implementation team to take a, you know, to study, take a look at all these and implement those things that can be, you know, there's sort of three month, six month, uh, nine month uh, recommendations and to begin the implementation of those recommendations. Uh, Nate's question on that topic has to do with um, any surprises uh, that you found in the report and what's your advice for whoever is mayor next to carry this forward? Well, my advice would for them would be to carry it forward, I guess, number one. Uh, the report's available. Hopefully the candidates will look at it. And, you know, this is one of those things that you have to do in, it's not that somebody sitting in room 200 can do this to um, the police department. You've got you've to work together on this. And I think, I know that Chief Hayden is very serious about uh, improving the departments in, in, in any way possible. So were there any surprises? Um, you know, I, I've read a little over half of it at this point. I just got it this morning at 8, um, and I've had a couple other things that I had to do today. But I'm going to study it more myself, and, um, and you know, I know that uh, Chief Hayden is doing the same thing as is uh, Public Safety Director Jimmy Edwards. Uh, another COVID question from Ryan Mayer. We get this one often about trade shows. Uh, do you anticipate when trade shows might be able to continue? or be allowed again in the city of St. Louis? So trade, <clears throat> trade shows is conventions and that sort of thing. I don't have, Brian, is this Brian Hall? No, it's Ryan. Oh, it's Ryan, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have the answer to that. I think, you know, as the numbers begin to come down and as vaccinations go up, there will be a point in time when you can get thousands of people together again, uh, but I don't know what that date will be. Uh, we did have uh, a few more questions before 2.30 uh, related to COVID, CARES Act. Any anticipation that the city will have to return any of the rental and mortgage assistance back to the state or the federal government? No, I don't expect that to happen. And then last topic we had questions about was tiny houses. Can you provide mm -hmm. an update on uh, who's going to manage it um, and how the community, if there is an opportunity for the community to be involved in helping folks there? 
Um, there is a, a contract, Magdala Foundation, Magdalene Foundation <clears throat> is the manager there, and they may have some volunteer opportunities. Um, that's something that we can get back with you on if there's a, a way to contact that. That is it for questions today. That's it. Thank you all. Appreciate you being with us today. I hope everybody has a great holiday. I know there are probably a lot of people off work this week or taking some vacation days. Uh, have, have a great time. Keep your groups small. Wear your mask. Thank you all.